So here it is. We got Tyreek Hill, number one fastest guy in the NFL. I don't know that anybody's really uh, shown that they're faster, but we've got two drills that maybe can help youth athletes learn how to run or optimize their speed like Tyreek Hill has. I mean, I've seen tons and tons of videos of his training regimens and things that he's doing. So he's kind of inspiring young kids, giving them a little bit of look on what he's doing. But we've got two great examples of exercises that you should be doing. I mean, his speed is a little well, bit unmatched. You know, you watch him on TV and you think, he's like the littlest guy out there. But I if know. you watch him here, he's a beast. Do you think that his height plays a major role in uh, his ability to have – you know, change of direction and still be able to maintain that high level of speed? Well, I think body control along with his excess speed allows him to move. That's kind of why running backs are usually not much more than about five foot ten. Now you have a lot of receivers that are maybe in the six foot to six three range, but he's just got exceptional speed. He can get the separation that most of us or most of them can't do. Should leave me out of it. It would right? be pretty nice to be able to run like that guy, wouldn't it? I, I would imagine you'd feel like you've got some magic feet. I've had the fun of watching him all these years for my team. Yeah, he switched gears on me. Now he's with the Dolphins. Uh, Not so much. I hope you slow down. Hater. You can't uh, be a hater. You know, winning is fun. Right, right. Well, anyway, let's get into it now. We got the first exercise is going to be the acceleration uh, starts. Okay, so if you're working on your 40, number one thing that you've got to do is learn how to set up the 40. So get on YouTube, do some searches. I've went over this in great detail on how you should set up your 40, because to be quite honest, if you've got a bad start position, this is a fast event, right? It's a start to finish. It matters your movement. So make sure that you're set up properly. Do some searching. Make sure you get that set up. But what we're going to do is you're going to do some acceleration starts. Oftentimes, youth athletes really struggle to get through that dig phase with proper form. And we've seen some really great results with the reactive stretch cord accelerating athletes on their 40. So get your setup. Put your reactive stretch cord on, and what you'll do is put just a little bit of tension in the cord as you accelerate into the 40, and you'll be starting to run in the first phase here, running some 20s. So we're not going to run that full 40. You're going to work on your starts with the cord. Remember, we've been out there with several different guys trying to film this and put uh, you know, some good footage together so people can see this. Do you remember the, the first time we ever did this? You set up. You get the drill started, and the first one they ever run, eyes light up <laughs> like, oh, man, I wish I always felt that way to start. Or a face plant, you know. Yeah. And that, that went back to the the assister has to really know what they're doing to make this beneficial. Very now, good point. We did sort of migrate into, it is kind of fun. So it's a great combination of drill. Yeah, that, that's why I suggest it as one, if you're really getting serious about your 40, the nice thing about this is you get a lot of repetitions with your starts. You get all set up properly. The anchor puts just a little bit of tension in the cord, not too much at the start. And then when uh, you have the cadence, you know, you say go, whatever you're, you're planning on doing, maybe you've got a whistle, whatever it is you're into, you have your cadence, you take off. That anchor adds an awful lot of acceleration or resistance in that cord, and it's like you're a bolt right out of the gate. But you can get a lot of repetitions and not really get into that fatigue factor, like you were saying, because it, it just assists you so much. Well, you're, you're, you're using the term overspeed, and I think a lot of people don't really understand what that means. Right. So what would you tell them? Well, overspeed is a great technique to train stride frequency. The faster that you can turn your body over with power and proper form, the more that's going to translate into game time speed. So with a cord like this, the overspeed training technique, you know, that's referring to the idea that you're assisting the runner, but it doesn't do any good unless you're maintaining proper form. So there's a couple key things you always want to watch out for in a drill like this, that if you pull so hard that the athlete overstrides or it's a bit of a, a stopping feeling. And what I mean by that, if you give someone too much acceleration, too much resistance forward, it'll slide their hips forward and you'll get a bit of a heel strike because they can't quite keep up the rotation. So the overspeed training technique in its finest you know, element is 
when you're giving them just enough assistance to where they're able to turn their feet over very quickly with proper form, you will still want to drive your knees up. You still want to move through the dig phase. It just makes it all that much easier. And then you kind of bring in that mental mind body connection where you're trying to turn over the feet as fast as you can. If all you're doing is allowing the cord to help you accelerate forward, you're kind of defeating the purpose. Utilize it to get your start set up, get repetitions there. When you pull for assistance, you want to make sure that they're maintaining proper form, quick, quick, quick feet, and then you start working on that mental aspect. After eight or nine reps, now you're thinking, move your feet, move your feet, move your feet, got to get faster. And then when you throw the cord, they're going to sprint out another 20, and you're just going to rep a lot of repetitions with the starts. Because quite frankly, these young athletes, that is going to be the most important part of trying to increase your 40-yard dash time. The greatest, easiest, biggest changes in speed is going to be in that first little leg of your sprint. Well, so, uh, you know, when, when these kids are doing it, I like to get them to where they understand what we're going to do. I've always used a little technique of what happens if you trip? What happens if somebody shoves you? Your body reacts to that. Now we want to translate that into your start and your sprint because you're looking about – all sports, most of them, I think, are looking at the 40-yard dash. And your start is oh, critical. Well, you know, if you go from a stop position, you, the 40-yard dash is the epitome of testing how quick you can accelerate. So in every single sport, the start and the stop is a big part, a big component of testing speed. So your 40-yard dash is your staple across all sports. And the faster you can make that, the better it is going to be for recruiting when you're coming into college, the better it is for you to be able to get into any next level. It's a bit of a show-off sprint. You know, when you get out there and you can showcase your skills, it's going to help you out a lot. And not to mention, breakaway speed comes from the start. So if you really work on that technique of how to drive your body forward and accelerate through the dig phase, let's be honest, for most upper-level sprinters, that 40-yard dash is just getting near their top speed in that window. They're, they're getting close to running at their finest, at their highest top speed. But let's be honest, some sprinters with longer legs really aren't actually getting into their true stride until after that 40-yard dash point. Well, you watch Tyreek Hill, it's, it's like his first step and then boom. He's got that acceleration and I think this is a great drill to start to develop that. So mix that thing in uh, to be specific on what you want to do with this. Start with maybe 10 to 15 reps where you're really just working the starts. Not giving them too much acceleration, but just enough getting the repetitions in. If they're really young, the starts is going to be more and more effective than it will be as they get a little bit older because hopefully they've already practiced those elements. If you're a little bit more advanced than what you'll want to do is you're going to take that up and you're going to really structure it. You're going to go four to six sprints all out, give them two to three minutes off four to six sprints again you'll repeat the process you kind of want to get down do a rep get down do a rep get down do a rep take a little bit of an extended break in between and do three rounds of that and what you'll find is as you move through those progressions also increase the distance that they'll sprint so give them the acceleration you may run 20 yards in the first sequence so if i'm doing this myself or if i'm training my son or my daughter now, am I going to do some of these resisted and some unresisted? How do you set that up? Well, for these, these specific suggestions, I would just do them all with the cord. Um, but you do have to have a partner. Uh, over speed techniques and, and training devices, like you have to have two people. It just is what it is. You, you strapping that thing to the wall and running out 10 feet and touching a cone, it's not over speed training. Right. That's, that's not going to do anything. It does require another partner. So... In the first sequence, I would suggest running 20s. In the second sequence of the four to six sprints, I'd run 30s. And then the final one, you'll run your 40. And then finish the day with maybe two or three reps, no assistance at all. Just run the 40. And you don't want to do these things every day. Maybe once a week, you're really focused on your 40-yard dash time. In some of the training packages, we've got the Athlete Performance Series. Anybody can download it. It's a training series that is about five weeks long. And what's recommended in there is with K-bands, not with this specific drill, but in that capacity, you're going to test out, run five weeks, and then you'll test out again. So in that kind of a training method, you're going to want to do the same thing. Hit these things maybe once a week and then stick to your normal speed and agility schedule. 
But at the end of your test out, as long as you're hitting them every week, you're going to get better at your starts. You're going to get better at that technique of really working through the dig phase. You're able to get a lot more repetitions practicing that movement. So by far up there on the list of best ever, but uh, that'll be our first exercise. The second exercise is going to be a little bit of a, a package depending on your level. It's all about hip flexors. If you are a beginner, you can always start with a standard knee raise. You got to focus on the hip flexors. It's been proven, I think, multiple times. There's been studies on Usain Bolt, several of these other top-level sprinters, and they show that these high-level sprinters have way stronger hip flexors than the average Joe. So in that comparison alone, we know we need to keep them strong. We know we need to keep them flexible. We know we need to be explosive. So in the base level, you're not going to be working so much explosiveness, more about getting your knees up. You know when we've seen little kids get out there, it's pretty often – that they have terrible knee drive. I mean, number one thing that most kids do is they kind of almost waddle, don't they? They keep their feet well, nice and low. Well, I think that they haven't quite developed the technique or the strength. Right. And you hear that term hip flexor a lot. So what exactly does that do? Or why do they use that term so well, much? Well, the, the hip flexor is going to lift the knee up. So when you're running and you're driving off with your back leg, if you don't have a great hip flexor to bring your knee up and develop that elasticity through the back half of your body to explode off in your next stride, that's what sometimes people are missing, that on the ground level of a youth, youth athlete, without getting your knee up, the chain at which will accelerate you forward is not going to be complete. So simple exercises, the first general recommendation is just knee raises. Whether you're using K-bands, you've got your straps on, and you've got the resistance placed above the knee, you can do that method. Or you can also use a resistance band around each foot. Same type of thing, because you're not going to be covering any ground. You're not going to be going anywhere. Simply lift the foot up, make it real easy for this level one athlete. You'll raise the foot up, nice little hold for one or two seconds, drop it down, bring it back up rapidly, and you're going to kind of mimic that motion. Do about 8 to 15, 8 to 12 on each leg. Take a little bit of a break and repeat four to five sets is plenty for this age group. Add a little bit of resistance after a week or two. Level one. How do you, how high do you recommend when they're doing this? It, normally you want to break the waist just because it's a little bit higher than maybe they may do when they're running. But in this specific, very isolated exercise, take that muscle to full capacity, right? So lift that knee up above the waist. Try to really get a little bit of separation. You can also do that with some weights. If you've got some of those monkey feet, I think is a, a newer product that uh, you strap to your shoe and you can put a dumbbell on it. But resistance bands, weights, it doesn't matter. Level one, that's a, a very easy exercise to do. If you're big, big into athletics and you're a super advanced athlete, you can do weight training style exercises in addition like that. Use the black bands on K-bands. If you're using monkey feet, add more weight. Try to build more power in your hip flexors for sure. Uh, level two though, level two, I would strongly suggest getting into something a little bit more movement. So what you're going to want to do is get yourself about 10 or 15 feet and you're going to do a little bit of a track sequence. Most people have seen uh, high knee sequences or A skip, B skip, all those types of things. You want to move through those types of movements with resistance. You can't really do it with much else other than K-bands, but you know, we've just seen such success with turning hip flexor training into sports specific movements with so resistance and you're going up and down this is not a race you're yes not, this yeah. is not timed you're you want to get as many reps in as you can yeah the, the focus is still hip flexor we're not really trying to sprint we're not really looking to run you're moving through a 10 to 15 yard meter doesn't really matter just in around that area moving forward slowly but the the focus is going to be hip flexors. Get your knees up, get your knees up, get your knees up. And then the third level is going to be a little bit more of an advanced session where you're either putting your hands on the wall and then you're going to get at a 45 degree angle. We call it the K-bands wall drill. This is going to be a great exercise for ballistic movements. Once again, it's not an everyday thing. You don't want to do this kind of an exercise every single day. You want to work this thing in once a week when you're really focused on hip flexors. Imagine the weightlifting splits when you're doing bench press once a week, when you're doing 
uh, your heavy squats, your compound movement, deadlifts, those types of things once a week. You're going to do that similar kind of a concept when you're training these hip flexors like that. We're really trying to overload those muscles to build more muscle in full range of motion. So on that wall drill, keep that body nice and flat, drive off the ground, and then really work to keep your feet down. I think there's been a little bit of a new movement. We, we've mentioned this guy before, the knees over toes guy. He talks a lot about feet. And it's kind of funny. There's a lot of different exercises that if you have your mind thinking feet, it's kind of more incorporated than you think in an awful lot of exercises. But that 45 degree angle on a wall, your feet get roasted if you've it's got a, some weak it's feet. It's a really intense exercise. So you are putting that at the third level sure you Um, you load every one of those joints in that chain are going to be loaded when you're on the wall i think that's one thing that that we tend to forget is how much the feet are important especially in that drill well it's a simple uh comparison if you've never been have you ever been on elliptical and you turn the resistance up really high i tell you what if you've got bad feet your feet get so tired because it feels you know a little bit like that moving in sand thing so if you've got uh some arch issues Side tip, if you've got any arch <laughs> issues, shin issues, get on an elliptical and pump the resistance up. That can really help strengthen your feet, but I would strongly suggest sets. I got big into elliptical, ended up getting one because um, I just was trying to get my cardio up, get a little bit of a sweat, was trying to mix it up. I've been doing ballistic movements and and cardiovascular style workouts for a long time. So I was going to go down the elliptical route for a short amount of time, and I would get on there, turn the resistance up to 18 something crazy be pumping it out i mean to tell you the arches of my feet were so sore the first week (laughs) that i started breaking it down into sets i'd have to go you know two minutes on minute off walk around a little bit until my feet could actually get a little bit stronger like you start to okay now i'm waddling now my feet are aching and you just get totally out of whack right that's not what you want to do right so In summary, you want to do the two separate exercises can help you out a lot, getting you towards that maximize your results. Now, remember, of course, if if you're not a gifted sprinter, you're probably never going to be like Tyreek Hill. Unfortunately, it's kind of sad to hear, but you can optimize your own speed. We've talked about that before in a video called optimize your genetics or something like that. You know, you can get better. So if you're not the fastest kid in the world, use some of these training techniques to try to take yourself to the next level and you too can run like Tyreek you know, you know, in just, a sense. Just be, you know, do it for yourself so that you become a better athlete. And this isn't about, hey, let's go out and do two hours a day. You could we'll probably knock this out in what, 15 minutes? Yeah, these two exercises, to be honest, you, you'll probably through the sprint phase on the 40s, that might take you eight or nine minutes, maybe 10 And then if you do your hip flexor exercises, you could probably do that in the weight room when you're in that world as well. Uh, So it can be a great exercise to add into your strength training or, you know, when you're doing your speed and agility days, that's a pretty easy one to finish with for sure. I think the cool thing is you can do these most anywhere. Oh, absolutely. So you don't have to have a lot of room. Even if you're doing the start phase, you don't have to have the full 40 yards to get the effect of that drill with the, with the, reactive stretch cords so. absolutely yeah if, if you are looking to run a little bit faster a little bit more like Tyreek Hill man he is uh, a pleasure to watch run he's awfully fast very explosive if you want to optimize your own results and get a little bit closer to what the old cheetah can run check out kbandstraining.com I think I've made thousands of drills but if you need a little bit of direction you're a youth athlete don't know what to do need some support or a little bit of guidance, head there and uh, check out some of the drills. We've got a lot of unique setups that uh, can keep you pretty motivated.